So I saw this article that said 80% of young Americans want to try out influencing, being a content creator. They find it very attractive. Be yourself, get paid, get paid real well, maybe. And I've been in this industry for a while and I've worked with pretty much every social media platform from Meta to IG to YouTube. I was also a host on TikTok radio for SiriusXM. And I've become aware of many of the traps that people fail to realize until it's almost too late, but it's never too late. But beyond influencing and the creator economy, I believe these lessons today can transfer into many industries or areas of your life that you will not want to miss. So pull up. This is the number one chill spot on the internet. One of the most beautiful aspects of growing an audience is you get to attract your tribe, your people. They show up, they watch you, they hang out with you, they support you, trade value. And quickly you feel like, finally, I have community. But one of the traps online is thinking your audience is actually your family. Now, listen, it is your com it is your community. You care about them. They care about you. But it's easy to fall deep into this connection with your audience, especially when they shower you with love and support. But it is crucial to remember that this relationship is often transactional and can change very quickly. Followers are fragile. Only a small percent may become your true digital family, but many, no matter how long they have been consuming your creations or what value you have provided, if you pivot or say something they don't like, change your style or whatever the reason it may be, they will leave. They may even hate you for something you say. You know, in our real connections in life, most of our friends and family won't completely write us off for having a difference of opinion or changing our style. But online, yes, it can be very different. Your audience, they are real people and you should care about them. You should show up and provide that value, that gift that you have within yourself. Treat them with respect, but don't overly rely on your audience to validate yourself. Set boundaries and you got to keep a healthy distance between your personal life and your online persona. You don't have to give all of yourself to the internet to be seen, to be, to be felt. You can curate a part of yourself for the world. I think digital privacy and protecting our online footprints is, is super important and not talked about enough. If you don't set boundaries with your audience, they will feel entitled to your whole life. I remember one of my followers messaged me and told me I was a horrible father because he never sees my daughter. He was judging my role and presence in my daughter's life off the fact he doesn't see her in my videos or I don't talk about my family <laughs> that much, nor give details, which is a choice I made with intention to protect and respect my daughter. But this is a great example of a parasocial relationship we develop online. And if you're not careful, you may give too much of your life and now you have thousands of people giving their opinions on something that should have been sacred to you to make sure we don't fall into these traps. We seek real connections and surround ourselves with, you know, genuine friends, family, people who support us regardless of our online success. I love having these real connections in my life. You know, uh, my daughter, she does not care what I do. <laughs> you know, she's like, it doesn't matter how many followers I have. She's like, you're just my dad. I have friends that aren't even really aware of what I do. I had dinner the other night with a buddy and he was shocked that I had half a million followers on Instagram. He had no clue <laughs> because our friendship isn't really based on that stuff. These type of relationships allow you to have a normal grounded life and show up in both spaces with intention and a very different intention. So the lines don't get blurred. A lot of people these days, a lot of people these days use the internet as a place for validation, not even just to validate if they are worthy, but to validate their feelings, their anger, their frustrations. They create bubble zones that mirror a false reality that they want to live in. Instead of going to their family, friends, or therapy, they go to the internet. They talk about a situation they had, how they're upset with their friend, drama with the family, whatever it may be. They'll blast people. They put it all on the internet so they can feel seen by their supporters who already have a natural bias for them. They like them, you know? <laughs> so it's like having a thousand yes men at your disposal. And this is not healthy. So we need to focus on internal 
validation rather than seeking it from the likes and the comments. Your worth is not defined by your follower count and measure your work by different metrics, not just views and numbers, but is your content getting better? Are you growing spiritually, emotionally, physically? Are you enjoying what you are doing? Just because you put in the work and the creative energy does not mean that you will receive the engagement that you hope for. Self-validation isn't a destination. It's a continuous journey. And when you constantly come back to your why, why you do what you do, you can ground yourself and move in the direction that matters consistently. We need a strong foundation and unfortunately, another trap is thinking the influencer creator economy is stable. It's really not. It's very volatile. You know, brand deals and sponsorships, they come and go. Algorithms change literally overnight, impacting your reach, your engagement, and possibly your whole livelihood if you're not careful. You know, I've seen creators on TikTok mention how they decided to quit because they made $100,000 one year and then the next year $15,000. The creator economy does not promise you a stable salary. It is not for people who fear uncertainty and require constant stability, especially in the beginning, because you can create stability for yourself. So it's important that you don't assume. You may have a video that goes viral and you assume this is your new normal your new average for views, uh, income, you should just take it as a blessing and keep your maintenance low and know that any day it can change. It can drop way down. Trends could change. The culture could change. Even if you are working hard, you cannot control the algorithms. You can only work with them, dance with them. So diversify your income is so key. Don't rely solely on platforms and monetization tools. Get creative, create a business, get smart, save, invest. Be prepared for those rainy days and stay adaptable. You know, keep up with what is going. Know how to fill those gaps and those voids and see your value and place yourself in the right position. Your old ways may not serve you in this new space. You will have to pivot and be flexible. This industry requires constant flexibility. It requires thinking out the box, being creative. For me, I created a bit more stability with creating my own community. I have over 800,000 followers on YouTube, but yet less than 5% of them even see my videos pop up on their feeds. So I created my own community space where I can access my community. We can hang out there, receive perks, access to my streams, guided meditation, structured programs we're building out, and their support and accountability giving me the control I need over what I have built. You know, I call it the number one chill spot on the planet because this truly is the number one chill spot on the planet. You can find more information about it on my website, which is powered by our sponsor of the day, Squarespace. So whether you're just starting out or growing a managing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content all in one place all on your own terms. Trust me, Squarespace is always evolving and they have a new few features like AI and SEO tools. You can now start a completely personalized website with a new guided design system. Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Tailor to your brand or business and optimize for every device. You can now also offer your customers flexible payments. Make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. Accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay, and in eligible countries, offer customers the option to buy now and pay later. Trust me, with Squarespace, you can stretch your imagination online with Squarespace's Fluid Engine, and now use the power of Squarespace's AI to kickstart or update written content on any website. Literally no more stressing, what should I say? You have all the support you need to succeed. As you can see, there is nobody in your own way anymore. The gatekeepers are gone. You can create a website literally today and launch your business. So if you're ready to take your online presence to the next level, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website or domain, go to squarespace.com slash Heinz to save 10% off your first 
purchase. Now, another trap we need to be aware of is cosplaying your past self. It is very easy to get caught up and to become known for something online, a persona, your niche, but we all grow, we change, and the things we create will evolve as well. Most artists and creators will hear this statement once in their life, at least once. I miss the old. I miss the old Kanye. I miss the old Heinz. I miss the old Emma Chamberlain. Fans always romanticize the first time they met their favorite creator and they want to hold on to that feeling forever. It's like that first kiss, your first love, uh, the honeymoon chemistry. And you may feel the responsibility to give them that. But you gotta be careful. You can't perform an old version of yourself that simply doesn't resonate anymore with you. You will start to resent yourself and it's hard to love anything through resentment. It's like a thick cloud. Instead, remind yourself and your audience, hey, my old material is there for you to consume, but there's a new creation forming within me and I got to see where this goes. It's hard to make these shifts when our livelihood may be attached to these identities that we have created, but I think it's a lot harder to live a life of resentment and fall into a place where what once brought us joy now brings us nothing of that sort. So leave room for experimentation and never be afraid to shed your skin because you got into this because you enjoyed it. Don't allow it to turn into something that you hate. I always say we might as well be ourselves. So the ones that love us, they can come so close. And the ones that don't, they can simply go find another tribe or find another person. You know, passion requires us to fan the flame. Don't fall into our last trap of the day where you lose your passion because you monetized your passion, right? When you turn your passion into a business, it's, it's a beautiful thing, but sometimes it can feel more like a job than joy. And this can lead to burnout and a loss of that initial spark that made you start in the first place. So we have to understand that balance is key. You know, I think having a nice mix of monetized and passion driven creations or experiences is perfect for not blurring the lines take breaks and don't be afraid to take time off to recharge and reconnect with your original passion or your intention or your why or if you're not even a fan of taking breaks like me just know when to slow down and when to speed up you know you don't have to be on autopilot all the time. You know, actually, I did take a break. I took 18 months off Instagram pretty much. And I recently just came back and have grown over 200,000 followers in two months because I am recharged, fueled, and ready to go. You understand? I nurtured my soil and made my foundation stronger. Know your rhythm and determine your own pace. Anytime you feel like you have swayed too far left or right from your original why, just remind yourself why you started. Keep your mission and your values at the forefront. Get in your journal, write it out. I created a lesson in a workbook on why the intention and in our original why is so important. I actually called it the ultimate why. It's the very thing that keeps me grounded and has allowed me to pursue my dreams for over a decade. To me, content creation, artistry, you know, influencing, whatever you do, anything, that you are bringing a gift into life, into fruition, is a spiritual practice. It's a personal development tool. That is why I do what I do. And I talk about this in The Ultimate Why, which is available in our private community exclusively for our creators in our creator tier, where we mentor creators on Zoom sessions. These sessions are beautiful. We come together, we share our struggles and root ourselves in solutions giving us the tools that we need to succeed i love these groups it's like creative therapy i have so much fun so i would love to see you pull up and hang out with us but we also have lessons that you can work through so you can get clear and convicted on your dreams if you're interested just head over to hindsight.com and subscribe monthly influencers creators artists let me tell you we need community one of the biggest traps i fell into was thinking I can do all of this by myself. I was a solopreneur, a solo creator. I prided myself on doing everything by myself. Multi-talented, sound, video, speak, 
I can do a bunch of things. I got vision, I got taste, but I had way too much pride in the way. So I had to challenge these beliefs because I kept burning out and I opened my arms and put myself in a position to receive help. And things started to feel a lot lighter and I felt supported and became fun again. And that is why I created our offline chill space, our creator space. So we have accountability and support and we can all thrive in our own individual pursuits. If you are interested in being a creator, an influencer or progressing, you know, this pursuit, you live in the best time to do so. As you can see, it's a big industry, it's a big economy, and it can take you places that past generations could have never imagined for us. You understand you have an opportunity of a lifetime being born at the time you were born. You can actually have an idea, bring it to fruition. And that idea could be your business. It could be the very means you are able to support yourself and others. You can literally carve the life you have always wanted for yourself. But just be mindful of these potential traps and come build with us. Pull up again to the number one chill spot on the internet. Thank you for tuning in, but I'd love for you to consider something. Joining us behind the scenes on the number one chill spot. This is a place where you get exclusive content, guided meditations, a space for members to chat, plus all the stream replays are exclusively in our chill space and you get access to our stream calendar so you do not have to miss another stream this is a ad free distraction free space a safe place where you can go on the internet ground yourself connect it's a space curated just for you mobile app and desktop version available just click the link in the description think about it i'd love to see you there